So what is a contract? I get asked this question all the time. A contract has three elements, offer, acceptance, and mutuality, right? I know, all legal terms, right? So what I'm talking about here, when I say it's an offer, an offer is basically somebody extending something out and say, hey, I want to buy this car for this much, or I want to buy this property for this much. An acceptance is somebody on the other side says, hey, I'll take it, I'll buy for this or whatever. And then mutuality is, that the pricing is negotiated, that there's no duress, that's not something outrageous. So somebody's not gonna sell you a $200,000 car for $5, okay? It has to be a meeting of the minds per se. Those two things are actually legal words, by the way. How do we know when a contract is enforceable? Essentially, if it has to be those three elements. Do it have to be written down? Nope. Uh, you got unilateral and bilateral contracts. Okay, what are those? Unilateral contracts is basically because somebody did something and you benefited from it, unilateral. So, one person. Bilateral is both parties have to do something where one party has to exchange a property, a car, and the other person has to pay. So that's bilateral, okay? A little history review. Which contract should you have a lawyer to review? I would say my magic number is like 5,000. Because once you get below 5,000, based on how much a lawyer probably is gonna charge to review a contract, it's gonna be a certain percentage of that and some people just are not comfortable with it. Uh, 5,000, I'm not saying that is a number, that's no statute, that's no case law, that's nothing, that's just a number, a magic number for me. Um, I typically say if you can afford it, you wanna have a lawyer to review all contracts. Primarily, what people don't understand is when they try to go to LegalZoom is that everybody's situation is different, okay? Um, if you're trying to buy a large piece of property and you're trying to put a little money down, your situation is going to be different versus somebody who's providing a cash offer and they don't care you know, about you know, ho uh, holding money, escrow, things of that sort. So I always try to tell people, you can try to, and I'm not trying to knock, knock LegalZoom, so anybody out there at LegalZoom, I'm not trying to knock you guys. However, what I try to tell people is you want to have your contract tailored to you, just like a custom-made suit or a custom-made piece of clothing. You want to have it tailored, tailored to you because guess what? You're going to have to deal with it. If it, stuff hits the fan and you got through the court and the judge asks you, well, why did you want to do this contract or why did you write it up this way? You want to at least have a plausible answer behind it. All right, so there's three factors to make sure a contract is enforceable. One is offer, acceptance, mutuality. Um, and so even though you might have something on writing, if it doesn't meet those three criteria, then that's no contract. So we talk about having something in force. A lot of people say, we well, just gotta write it down, we gotta write it down. Well, it doesn't first, it doesn't need to be written down all the time. But two, even if it's, if it's wrote down, it doesn't mean that it's enforceable. So I talked about the $5,000 mark, okay? That's not set in, set in stone. What I'm talking about is you want to make sure that whatever you're, you are paying a lawyer to review the contract, is that it's just not some obscene amount of the contract that you review. So for reviewing a contract to be worth an attorney's time, I always tell people it just depends on the length of document and the complexity of your case. So if you have a 50 page contract that you want me to review, obviously gonna take some time just to read the thing. And when I'm talking about read, I'm not talking about leisurely reading. I'm talking about actually annotation, looking up case law and statute and make sure what's applicable and what's not. So I just said two things there guys. Statute and case law. Let me give you a quick rundown of what those mean. Statute is the what we call the black letter law, okay? And actually, it's a book, a dictionary called the Black Law Dictionary. Go figure. Uh, on so many different levels. But uh, black, the black letter law or the statute is what's written in stone, okay? This, what's the state statutory requirement? What is the federal statutory requirement? What does it actually mean? So, for instance, if you are trying to buy a piece of real estate, one, a person cannot, who's not a real estate agent, cannot sell somebody else's real estate. Let me repeat that. A person who's not a licensed realtor cannot sell another person's piece of real estate. You have to be licensed because otherwise you get fined by the SEC. So you have a lot of people who are dealing with these real estate uh, contracts, hold some things that so you have to be careful. So when you review a contract such as that, you wanna look at the state, state requirements and say, okay, are you selling your real estate property or are you selling somebody else's real estate property? And so that's the black letter law, okay? Case law is, okay, the specific variables that are applied to this, the facts, okay? So for, for instance, John Doe is selling a piece of property and that piece of property is owned by his mother. And mother just passed away, 
but the province in the state, yada, 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 I'm not gonna make the, the facts too complex, but the state law will allow John Doe to sell that property, even though it is his mother, because it's in the state, and if John Doe is one of the heirs of that state. So, you see the difference? One is the black letter law said no one else, unless you're a real estate agent, can sell a piece of property. But in this specific instance, because the mother's passed away and the property's in John, John Doe's mother's name, but she's passed away, is now in an estate, and he might be given authority to sell that property. So the main difference between statute and case law is one, statute is black letter law, and case law is actual different fact patterns in previous cases that have been applied using the statute. And based on every year, that could change. So that's why when you send a contract to a lawyer and they say, man, why he billed me X number of dollars? It's because not only did we read it, we read it, then we took our previous experiences with this similar case, but also what we did, what we call shepherdizing. We shepherdized the, uh, the case of current cases to see what are the recent rulings because laws change from year to year. What I tell people when you work in a contract, anything, whether it's a product, service, or something like that, unless it's real estate or something like that, you will always want to get half your money up front and put the other half in escrow. Escrow is basically just an account that someone's over that says, hey, once these certain variables or factors have been met, that money is released, okay, to the party. If it's not, that money is given back to the person who put in escrow. What this does for the consumer or the person who's working the deal is to make sure that you don't put all this money, whether it's your time, your talents, your products, like let's say if you're doing a contract job, you're not going to Lowe's or Home Depot, putting all this stuff in your credit and then on your credit at Lowe's or Home Depot to do this project. And then once you finish the project, the person said, oh, they don't have any money. At least you get the fit fit up front so you at least can cover your labor, your, your resources, whatever it is to get the project done. Let's do a general overview. How are contracts enforced? You gotta have those three factors. Offer, acceptance, and mutuality. Uh, what's the difference, be, uh, difference between you having a contract enforceable and unenforceable? They have to meet those three factors. What does it take for a lawyer to review? That depends on the, on the lawyer, one. And then two, what's all, be, what's all been disputed or I guess agreed upon in the contract? So a law, every lawyer charge is different. Some lawyers might uh, charge a percentage of the contract, things of that sort. And then I would say there's a big difference between statute and case law. Statute is black letter law. Case law is actual taking that statute and applying it to the facts of the case. All right, I'm Ronnie Rice. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We just discussed different factors of contracts. Please like, share, comment on this video. Follow me on social media, Get Rice Now. That's G-E-T-R-I-C-E-N-O-W. Call or text 205-222-9815. That sounds like an infomercial. 205-222-9815. You guys have a great day.